welcome back to the GSL Code A with Keldor and Wolf. We are in our second set of matches. We just saw Hongen fall out of the GSL again, doing two back-to-back -back Void Ray All-Ins. And of course, next up we have Puzzle vs. Seal. See that video that was in the break? Uh, that Which fear one? game? That first uh, first encounter assault that recon? That started weird. The guys in the club dancing and suddenly you see uh, everything just shooting around. I'm like, what's happening? You know what's funny is I mostly played StarCraft 1 and very few other games. You know, when I was, before StarCraft 2 came out, I played a, a rhythm game called O's. Duke Nukem 3D? I didn't play, but. Oh, wow. But I, to me. I played. You don't know the king? <laughs> really? I, 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 I. Oh my god. I'm sorry, man. That wasn't mine, but I did play a little bit of Fear. I don't. I guess it was the original Fear. I thought it was a pretty fun game, but used to play it online sometimes. Uh, so it's cool to see that they're coming out with more games. But here's our next match. It's gonna be Puzzle yeah. versus Seal. Uh, kind of like a, a new versus the old in a way, but Puzzle hasn't been around. He doesn't have the same uh, reputation that MMA has, for example. Puzzle, on the other hand, I talked a little bit with uh, Sela earlier and I asked him in what shape Puzzle currently is and he just said Puzzle is way too Imba. Seal might be a good opponent, but he is... He's on the opinion that uh, Puzzle is going to take this easy. And the one thing that we really have to say about Sela, if we, when we talk to him, he's always dead honest to us. If he actually thinks that one of his players currently sucks, he will tell us. He actually is hardly ever wrong either. Yeah. When he says a player that he thinks when, on his team he thinks he's going to lose, I would say probably 95% of the time he tells us that, and that person, that person loses. That is some honesty that I'm really not used to. When I talk to a lot of the coaches, they're like, yeah, my player is the best out there. And that's kind of the attitude that you expect, but Seller is always He tells it like it is, man. Exactly, he tells it like it is, and that's something that I really respect him for. Seal, by the way, once again with his glasses, he's yeah. Got I, I don't know, he's okay with the glasses. Yeah, he is, but still. All right, let's go into this puzzle versus seal game one here at the GSL Code A with Calder and Wolf. And here he is. Here we have him to the top left of the map. And teammate of MMA. We have in the red the Protoss player starting for the Slayers team. We have Slayers Puzzle. The funny thing is that uh, Sela told me that currently it's really hard for them to train because in uh, apparently the air conditioning is not working in the Slayer's house. They ordered a new one and it's supposed to come today or tomorrow, but right now it's way too hot. Yeah. It's like really difficult for them to train. Kind of a fun fact. And here's our Zerg player, of course, from the team in Hosa, an academy team. His idea is... Enes Hoso we discussed this a lot, I still can't figure out what type of seal he is. Like, is he an endangered seal? Are you going to seal an envelope with him? Is he like the magic type of seal? Uh, he's the oink oink seal. You think so? Yeah. Alright. I think so. He's cute, so... Yeah, makes sense. Pulling well, a Harry Potter today. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, with those glasses. Those glasses are really, like, really... I, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of awkward to me. I can see why they appeal to people, but I would never wear them. I would look so stupid. <laughs> well, it suits some people, you know. Uh, certain hairstyles, for example, go well with it. Um, you know, what Puzzle is a player who has a lot of experience in individual leagues. And Seal is not. Seal is a team league player. Now, what does that mean? That means that Seal doesn't have as much experience preparing for specific matches and specific builds Whereas Puzzle has had a long time to learn how to do that. And since they both had time to repair, yeah, Puzzle and he had the same time, they both knew they are told the same day that their first round opponent. But I feel like Puzzle probably is better used to preparing. And that's the difference between someone who excels in Team League and someone who excels in the Individual League. That's the same difference between someone who excels in Lands, for example, where you have no idea who your opponent's going to be until you get to the next round versus someone who has uh, played only in Code S and has a ton of time to repair. I feel like that's one of the reasons why Naniwa, for example, does so well in uh, the GSL is because he's so smart and, you know, he actually really knows how to prepare well. That is actually really funny that you say that because uh, I randomly, really completely randomly bumped into Naniwa on my flight from Moscow to, uh, to Korea. He was actually on the same flight. And, well, we talked a lot. We happened to have seats next to each other, which was really coincident. It was so funny. 
Uh, but he already, in his mind, was thinking the entire time about his next Code S games. He was just thinking about what kind of builds he could use, what kind of strategy would be the best, and uh, thought about what kind of games he played lately, if he wants to use the same strategies, even though he might have already shown how he's going to approach this. It was really so interesting to see, because we had eight hours, and he was just thinking constantly about what he's going to do against which opponent. But well, coming back to the game at hand, we have a Nexus first from a uh, puzzle, currently starting with his tech, with the Cybernetics Coil's yeah, wall in. He went fast, by the way, with yep. his gate. He went Forge Gate after Nexus first, uh, really fast, wall not off. And he already has the double gas, whereas Seal did not apply any pressure, he's just going for the 440 timing for his hatch, and is now on three bases. So on Ohana, there are a lot of pos uh, potential um, actions that you can take. We saw one earlier today with a really smart play by Hero who had to face Juke 2 on uh, was going for a lot of gateway action which Hero really really likes and played it very very smart. Juke 2 with a response that we've seen out of the Ukrainian player Dimaga a lot not going for the ro uh, roaches but using Zergling Baneling. Seal on the other hand he's more of a roach player and we'll probably see the roach run at roughly minute through like around the seven minute mark as well as the evolution chamber. You're right. It's going to be interesting to see how exactly he's going to approach it but first of all what is Puzzle going to do here? Yeah, he has a lot of gas do? now. Look yeah, at it. Double gas is going up at his natural now. Three and four. Remember, he, he he has that probe out, and if he loses the probe, which it looks like he very likely will, that's it, man. He has a tight wall. Can't get out. And he's already going for the robotics transition. And with the robotics transition, uh, those immortal pushes are just so likely. And on a map like this, if you can't stop the run by attempts of your opponent, then immortal pushes are really strong if you get in the correct position. I feel with like I feel like you're right, man. And, and with all these different builds available for Protoss these days, it's very difficult for Zergs, I feel, in this matchup. There's less options. And let's just face it, this immortal push is like crazy strong. It is so, so strong. Of course you know how you can defend it. Of course you know how you can beat it. But I talked <laughs> I talked with Naniwa today about this build and he said it's a strong build. Zerg kind of figured out how to defend against it. But the problem is it is way easier to execute the build than defend against it. Yeah, I would say so. His words, not mine. And he hates Zerg. I actually, For good reason. <laughs> I, I actually feel the same way uh, about some of these builds. Um, for example, the Sentry Drop build can be difficult, but if you defend it, I mean, that's it. There are some builds that are like that, and there always will be, and I don't think that's a problem. Uh, I like the approach of Seal. Usually what we see is a lot of Zerg players will stay on uh, Tier 1 a little bit uh, longer. We'll start with not only the Roach Run, Evolution Chamber, we see both for Seal, but we have a fairly fast tech for Seal here. And if he goes straight for the Infestation Pit or for Immutalist Timing, I think the Infestation Pit is a little bit more likely here, he can actually try to just fungal down those sentries. And sentries is what this push evolves around. It's not only the, the backbone with the Immortals, they dish out the damage, but you have to have those force fields, those sentries. And if you have enough fungals in your composition, then suddenly this push is really endangered. Yeah, exactly. And when you... See, right now he's adding five gates, and if he goes with this push, right now at this timing, like a fast push with just plus one with no armor upgrade, it can be really hard to stop. It's the, it could be the fastest version. But I, I, the, way, the way he's doing, the way he's moving right now, I feel like he may not attack. It's hard to, to say. He's actually... Well, he's going to attack that pylon. He delays his tech here. He spends the gas first in the speed upgrade for the roaches. Speed link upgrade is already on the way as well. So he will, won't have any kind of fungal in order to stop this, and he wouldn't, prism, been, the he wouldn't have been ready. Warp Prism, that's something that I love, by the way. Uh, let's uh, let just check. Two Immortals, the Warp Prism, uh, this is basically exactly what Mana made against. What, he used it not only against Stefano at Remake, but also against Dimaga. And the Warp Prism is something that fell a little bit out of fashion. Most Protoss players today use Pylons again, but I love the Warp Prism. It really adds an additional threat to this push. Well, this and is really edge. scary, man. Those spine crawlers are not ready in time. It's all going to come down to forest fields, and the immortals need to target a little bit better. Right now, they're shooting at Zerglings. Now they're going to start to target a little bit better. He should look, try. It, like forest fields, man, they are perfect. Yeah, but he should try to target down this one sentry. He doesn't do it, but now the force fields are suddenly gone. The question is, does he have the round of units that he needs in order to make this work? In order to move in here and take down these units? Just look at the army of puzzle. I love the position here. He's using the hatchery against his opponent, making sure the Zerglings cannot surround the Immortals, doing a ton of damage. He only has plus one, but plus one for Zerglings is not done yet. 
Just doing so much damage, warping in stalkers now. He this needs to take down this wall prism. He should target it with the queen. He finally does it, but it's way too late already. You know, this this game may just end here. In fact, I'm certain it will. There's not much else Seal can do. He's going to lose his hatchery here. He will have to kill both hatcheries to really lose the advantage, but I mean, he, he will do just that. There's nothing stopping him from killing a second hatchery. He's even going to get these roaches over here in the corner for free. I like the, uh, uh, the initial engagement, but the thing is he should have moved back immediately after those force fields were cast because from this point on he just could not win anymore. The bird is gone now. He's desperately trying to save his natural, but the rocks are about to die, and as soon as Puzzle moves up this ramp, it's going to be trouble. The spine crawler is not ready just yet. More warp ends and more immortals as well. He's on top, and that is just way too good of a position for Puzzle to lose this game. It seems like it, but the roaches are attacking from all sides now. But you're right, man. He just has, even though he's being attacked from multiple sides, the angle is just too good. And Puzzle now taking a supply lead. The drones are being pulled, but they can't even close the distance. They're hindering more than helping at this point. Zealot's tearing through those drones, and with the next round of warp ends, looks like Puzzle is going to easily take game one. Great timing here by Puzzle. Really, really well done. And Seal with this opening. He did not stand his chance against this. He did not go for any kind of infestation pit, but the tech would have been done a little bit too late. It would not have helped him that much. The decision that he took here was the right one, but how he engaged his opponent's army was a bit of a misstep, and he just overcommitted. He baited the force fields, and then he committed himself to the attack, even though he could not close the distance. Uh, now Seal's struggling to figure out what his next attack should be, and it looks like he's going to go for it now. The force fields go down, but they're not even needed at this point. The roaches can't escape. There's a few queens left, but that is all that Seal has, and I think you could say the puzzle has sealed the deal in this game. GG. Game over. First game for the Slayer's player. The queen is really crucial. If you face the immortal attack, with the War Prism support, you always need to try to uh, make sure that the War Prism dies. If you're able to pull it off, then suddenly this push will lose its momentum. It will just lose the force and the power behind it. So at least try to target it down. You will force the Protoss player to get the War Prism back into the flying mode and just make sure that he has to retreat with it. So attacking the units with the Queen is a bit of a misstep here. It's just those small things. As we said earlier, so hard to, to defend against this push. You have to have the perfect time and the perfect engagements. Try to surround your opponent with your army. And, well, there we have them. The NS Hosa coaches trying to talk to a Seal and uh, prepare him for the next map. It was a really nicely timed attack. It was the fastest possible way to hit with the Immortals. A great one to use on this map where it's a fairly small map. You can rally the Warp Prism quite literally behind your army. You can move up before it comes. And I, I really like the execution. The force fields, the first wave force fields, I mean, we all saw those. You know those hexagons on, uh, like, Tall Dream Altar on the map design where you see, yeah. like, hexagons together and none of them overlap? That's, like, what his force fields look like, man. They were really good, and that's what Puzzle is known for. He actually, I know, I'm sure you guys remember this, his old ID was force field mon for a reason. <laughs> He could have just killed two or two more sentries. They were really low on health and just pull back with the entire force, uh, with, with all your army. The two roaches that were stuck, they were able to pick off one of the sentries. They could have killed the second one as well, but they did not focus fire. And this is one of the things that Stefano, for example, does so well. And when he encounters a push like this, he usually focus fires like really well and takes down unit after unit, especially the sentries are crucial. And when uh, Seal engaged with the second wave, he also did not try to focus down those immortals, even though he was able to get into, into range. You're right. I, I, I think his micro definitely could have been better. His timings for attacking into the army definitely, I mean, really could have been better. He had attacked a little bit prematurely at times. We're going to jump into our second game now between these players. Can Seal tie it up or will Puzzle 2-0 him here? It's the GSL Code A with Calder and Wolf.